Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to take a look at the Transformers Legacy Evolution Wave 4 Deluxe Class Detrius. Let me know what you think of this figure in the comment section down below. Is it a pickup or pass? Now let's take a look at the figure's packaging. So here we have the packaging, starting at the very front, we have Transformers on the side, we have the Legacy Evolution logo at the bottom, we have Detrius in white text with an Autobot symbol and a Decepticon symbol also done away. We have a really cool artwork shot of Detrius in kind of his Jeep Van Ultima, we have an open one displaying the figure in the packaging, and if you do look at the top of the box, there's a QR code, if you do scan that, that will show his stats. On the side, of course, we have two artwork shots of Detrius in his robot mode, one more of a close-up shot of his head and chest, and one more of a wide shot of Detrius in a really cool action pose with his weapons or accessories. On the back, the figure transforms forms in 13 steps or silver product shot showing off the robot, the alt mode, and his Evo Fusion gimmick. And of course, on the final side, we have half of the Legacy Evolution artwork, so if you do get another figure from this Legacy Evolution line, you can put both boxes together and complete the artwork. And that is pretty much it for the packaging, so let's now get into the review. Here we have Detrius in his robot mode. Let's take a look at the details, starting at the very top with the head sculpt. We have some really nice white for the face, some red for the eyes, some really nice gold for the entire goatee with some silver for the crest, and a really nice sandy brown color for the entire helmet section. As for the entire arm, it's actually done kind of a mixture of a dark maroon and a brown. It's a pretty cool, interesting shade of colors. I do like the little lighter shade of red and a little kind of bronze gold mixture on the forearm. And of course, same details repeated on the other arm, but there is actually one change. If you do look at the shoulder, there is an Autobot symbol on the shoulder, which was not present on the other one. Interesting enough, if you actually do turn to the back of the figure, the back of the figure's head, there's actually a Decepticon symbol in there. So this character, Detrius, does wear both uh, Decepticon and Autobot symbols. So it's kind of interesting. You could probably come up with some really cool backstories for this character. Like maybe he's actually on both sides. Like maybe he's a spy or a bounty hunter. It'd be pretty cool if he made a few appearances in like a show or a movie. I'd really like to see that. As for the entire chest, it's actually made of kind of the entire front grill and hood section from the truck mode, which is pretty cool. I do like this huge uh, box done in kind of a bronze gold with some really cool laddering nut and bolt detailing with some tubing as well. And there's actually the headlights done in silver with a bit of venting in the background. And of course the base color is mostly done that kind of sandy broad color that we actually saw for the uh, head sculpt or the helmet section of the head. Um, and if we do look at the lower portions of the figure, we actually have some really cool kind of dirty brown for the entire stomach and the top of the legs with a bit of a darker brown for the crotch and waist. We have several shades of brown and red for the front of the legs and the feet. And if we do look at the side profile, overall actually really clean and compact. Very little, you know, kibble, no backpack whatsoever. And of course, we do have all four wheels at the back of the legs here, which unfortunately, if you don't know, all four wheels are mushroom peg, which I do have to say, I have a bit of an acceptance and kind of tolerance with some designs using the mushroom peg wheels. I don't like it when they're mushroom peg wheels and you can actually see the mushroom peg exposed, but this is actually not one of those cases, which is really good to see. It's actually completely covered, so I don't care as much. Of course, any day, yes, I do prefer pin wheels, but honestly, I can tolerate this. It doesn't bother me as other cases, of course. I do like how it's covered because it just looks so much better. I do love all the silver and the nut and bolt detailing with some really cool black for the tire. And if we actually look at the back of the figure itself, we do have that Decepticon symbol. You might be wondering, why is it upside down? Why is it facing up? Um, it's because it actually mostly comes into play later for the truck mode, because actually is a part of the hood, if you're wondering why. It might seem a bit weird, of course, looking at the back of the figures and seeing that. And of course, if we do look at the other parts, the back of the arm is really well filled in. No arm kibble, no waffling. Yes, there is a few hollow spaces here and there, like the back of the legs and of course the back itself, but there is actually a good, decent explanation. So the back of the legs actually do fold up for the transformation for the truck mode, so they kind of need those hollow spaces for the legs. Yes, they probably could have added maybe like a secondary panel to cover that. That would have been nice. Same goes for this entire hole on the back itself. This is actually kind of the seating area for the truck mode, so they do kind of need it for the other mode, but again, maybe another secondary panel to cover that would have been nice. But as for articulation, overall pretty good for a deluxe class figure. So the head cannot look up or down. It cannot tilt side to side, but it can look left to right. Of course, the arms can move out and in, forward, back. There is a bicep rotation and elbow bends. There is a wrist rotation. As for, of course, the waist, if we do move the arms out of the way. There is a full functioning waist rotation completely unhindered. The legs can kick forward, back, out to the side. There is, of course, a knee bend to a very good degree because all of that hollowness in the back of the legs. There's a bit of rotation at the top of the leg and an ankle pivot. Um, as far as tolerances go, actually really good. Um, I'd say most of the joints, you know, the core joints you use for poses, the arms, the legs, the ankle pivot, waist, are, I would say, tight, but not too tight, and of course, not loose at all. There's a few areas where the tolerances, like where panels are concerned, probably could have tapped in a bit better. You might have seen already, I'm not really sure. The inner panels, they have a huge tendency to untab whenever I'm posing and messing with the figure, so a couple panels here and there probably could have locked into place a bit better, but as far as, you know, the core joints you use for poses and the figure, the arms, the legs, 
they were actually really, really good. Maybe if they wanted to go the extra mile, they probably could have put in a few pieces of filler plastic for the ankle pivot, because when you use the ankle pivot, there's a huge gap there, and that doesn't look that good. But I know they typically only really do that with like leaders, because it was the most expensive figure, you know, of the basic mainline wave. So I really wasn't expecting that for this deluxe class figure. But as for accessories, he actually does come with this really cool, simple kind of gold bronze pistol, which is blasted piece compatible and can be stored in any mech tech port across the entire figure. There's some of the shoulders, the forearm, the hands. There's actually some of the legs, and I'm pretty sure there's more on the back. I typically just store it in the hand. I think that looks the best. Um, as for his final accessory, it's actually this really cool kind of rocket launcher, which you can store at the shoulder, the hand, again, pretty much all the same areas as the blaster. This missile is removable. You can actually store a plastic piece, attach it to there, so it looks like it's firing, which is a nice feature, but I would advise to be careful for two reasons. The post that actually is used to connect to this is clear plastic, so you hope it doesn't crack. Also, this is very small, so you could easily lose it, so I probably won't ever, like, remove this, you know, ever. I really don't see a need to. Um, I have seen a few people, like, you know, store it in different ways, you know, you can do some really cool poses, but for the most part, I'm probably going to keep it attached, but I actually like to store at the shoulder, there's that post and port there, I actually like to store on the opposite side of the blaster to kind of spread out the accessories, and that's actually kind of interesting, so maybe if you don't really like Dietrich's design or the small, but you really like his accessories, they actually took his accessories and added a new deco to them and actually packaged them in with a different figure, and the Toxitron collection was actually the G2 Universe Jazz, and his review should be up on the channel very, very soon, makes you stay tuned for that. So they actually took these accessories and of course put them in that kind of bright orange silver deco which is pretty cool so a bit of an accessory comparison in case you're you know wondering um you know you might not like this mold but you actually really might like the accessories so you actually have another opportunity to get these weapons which is pretty cool so yeah, um, it's kind of interesting. I really don't think I've ever seen them actually take accessories from other figures and include them, of course, with another one, which I'm actually okay with because some weapons I actually really like and I want more of. So I'm actually kind of all for it. Um, but as for, of course, some comparisons, here he is with a mold comparison, that being the Siege Deluxe Class Hound. This figure was from quite a while ago, so you might be surprised. He actually does share some pieces. So as for similarities, there's very, very few. I could be wrong. There's sometimes, of course, your eyes can trick you. You might actually think, oh, this is the same mold, but you could be completely wrong, of course. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I'm pretty sure the arms are the same mold, and I'm pretty sure the shoulder is also the same mold as well, as well as the top of the legs and I think some not all but I think some of the pieces of the crotch are the same and you can definitely tell the feet design is quite similar as well and even the areas where they're not as similar in mold they are actually very similar in placement as you can see you know like the legs completely different in mold but both of them have those mectic ports on the side of the legs and another really good example is actually the back of course their wheel design completely different no similarities in mold but they all end up with all four wheels at the back of the legs so you can definitely tell they take traits and design you know, cues from each other, which is pretty cool. Um, a huge improvement on Detrius over, of course, Hound here is they actually removed this entire backpack, so he has a much cleaner backpack, and he actually has a lot better articulation. So, of course, if you didn't know, Hound is, of course, more, uh, you know, Cybertron, more futuristic base, and Detrius here is more Earth-based. He's more, you know, classic, more of a normal truck you would see today. Um, and if you are actually um, wanting, maybe, you know, a repaint of Detrius into Hound, we actually are supposed to be getting one. So, there's a bit of a backstory with this mold, because I'm pretty sure the Hound version version of this mold was actually supposed to come out first. This was technically supposed to be the repaint, but most of us have actually gotten Detrius first. I've seen no actual predator or availability of that hound. Um, if you don't know, they're actually supposed to be taking this figure and repainting it into, of course, an earth-based hound using that mold. I don't think there's supposed to be any mold changes. I think they're just supposed to be, you know, painting it that kind of camo green color, and that's it. Maybe it's some slight new tooling with the head, and he's supposed to be released in the Studio Series Buzzworthy Bumble 86 line, which I probably will pick up that figure because in my opinion I think the Detrius slash Hound earth base mold is probably better than the Siege Deluxe class Hound mold. That's just my opinion anyway. Of course you might like the more Cybertron base. I think I probably prefer the earth base because I think there's better articulation, better accessories, and of course there's less kibble on the back. That is just my opinion. Of course let me your thoughts your thoughts on these two molds in the comments section below. Which one do you prefer? And I'm assuming they'll probably post that Hound soon. We've actually had quite a few leaked images for a while now but no sight of any Predator in sight. Hopefully soon I'm assuming. Um, but that is pretty much it for that mold comparison. Now for some wave comparisons here he is with Shadow Striker. I think they look really cool side by side and her review is coming very soon on the channel. Make sure you stay tuned for that. And for one final comparison is with Bombshell and his review is up on the channel right now. Make sure you go check it out after this one. 
And that is pretty much it for comparisons and this robot mode. Let's now get down to transformation. Now for transformation, what you're going to do is untab the shoulder from the chest. There is a slot and tab right there. You're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Then you're actually going to flip this panel out. There's two posts and two ports. That's just going to plug into place just like that. Then you're going to hinge this entire chest panel up like that. It's actually going to form the entire front grill and hood section. You're going to collapse this panel to finish the entire front hood section. You're going to flip this around. There is two small little posts on the shoulders. There's this little kind of cutout or slot, and that's just going to slide into place just like that. Then you're going to rotate at the bicep, rotate at the bicep. Then you're actually going to go to the inner leg, um, actually untab these panels and completely unravel them just like that. Same thing on the other side. Then you're actually going to flip this around. You're going to fold up the entire leg just like that. And the leg is pretty much going to form the entire back half of the truck and the side as well. Do the same thing on the other side. Fold this up. You can actually tab the legs together. Then you can actually use these tabs on the side of the hood and there's actually a slot on the inside of that panel that's just going to tab into place. Then you can actually fold in the feet like that. And that is pretty much it for transformation. Let's now take a look at the details. Here we have Detrius in its truck mode. Let's take a look at the details. Starting at the very front, we have some really nice clear plastic for this entire windscreen section with pretty much the entire majority of the front half of the truck mostly done in this really nice sand brown color with a very classic Decepticon symbol done in purple on the front hood with some really nice silver for these front headlights with some venting detailing in the background with this really cool kind of mechanical box done in kind of a goldish bronze mixture with some nice nut and bolt and tubing and a ladder detailing. And if we do turn to the side here, we actually have all four wheels are mushroom peg, but overall actually rolls pretty well across any service. Yes, I do typically prefer pinned wheels, but I actually can easily get an excuse with or sort of kind of a pass. Cut some slack off this figure. I actually quite like the design. I do like the silver for the inner part of the wheels with some really nice nut and bolt detailing and some black for the tire itself. There's actually a few kind of boxes and some canisters here. You could probably use your imagination say maybe they're storing ammunition or energon or something. And there's quite a few mech tech parts for weapon storage that I'll go over in just a sec. And we do have the back wheel here, pretty much the exact same design and shape as the front. Unfortunately, you know, they did change quite a few things about Detrius from the original Siege Deluxe Class Hound, but unfortunately they actually did keep one thing the same that I've actually always had a problem with this mold, is the arms. They kind of just hang underneath the truck. I never like this. I actually uh, thoroughly remember mentioning this in the Orion Packs review, that Amazon exclusive Humble Origins pack. I actually reviewed that just like a couple weeks ago, and I mentioned that. I remember mentioning it, and I was really hoping if they are ever to make an updated version of this mold, you know, maybe add a few pieces, they would change that, or if they could have added like a second panel to cover it up, that would have been really nice. Unfortunately, they did not take that opportunity. Um, of course, there is, there is a quite a few things they did change that does improve this figure, but this is probably would have been one of my ma major complaints of this mold overall. Not, of course, the biggest deal. If you do look at at the front, you can't even see, but if you do look at the side, that does not look the greatest. Um, one thing that I think they definitely improved for this truck over the Siege Deluxe Class Hound is they actually did remove that entire top kind of cage piece, which you do have to be aware when they uh, remove that cage piece, they actually do take away quite a few uh, mech tech ports for weapon storage. So it does kind of limit the amount of ways you can store the accessories that might matter to quite a few people. There is still quite a few mech tech ports left, so that really doesn't bother me, but of course it could bother others more than me. Um, but you do have to be aware of that. So they actually did remove that entire top cage piece. I'll actually bring out Hound for a truck comparison in just a second you'll see um so it actually does actually have a much more clean back for the truck and i think it actually looks really good much better in my opinion and also it does affect the robot mode not just the truck mode because for hound the entire top cage piece actually did also form a backpack in the road so since detris does not have that cage piece he pretty much had virtually no backpack at all as you saw of course when he was in his robot mode earlier in the review so i think there is definitely more pluses and minuses for this figure than hound that is just my opinion anyway and hopefully someday maybe if they want to go back to this mold, you know, a couple years from now, four or five years from now, maybe they can actually fix this entire arm thing because it's probably been one of my major complaints that they still have not addressed. But if we do look at the back, overall pretty clean, some more mech tech ports. We actually have a bit of red, some darker brown, and overall just a really plain, cool looking truck in my opinion. So now for accessory storage, you actually can use, you know, any of the mech tech ports across the entire truck. There's some on the sides. I actually typically do use these two back here. I think that looks the best. And of course, you can do either side really up to you how you want to display it. I'm going to store the missile launcher on that side, and then I'm going to store the blaster, the one closer to us. And I think that looks pretty cool, in my opinion. So let's now get down to two quick Vilka mode comparison series with his wave mates, the Legacy Evolution Wave 4 Strongarm, and her review is coming very soon on the channel. Make sure you stay tuned for that. 
Overall, I'd say pretty much the exact same size. He is a bit more beefy and bulky, but you know, lengthwise, I'd say they're pretty much the same. And for now, one quick mold comparison. Here he is with the Siege Deluxe Class Hound. So as you can see, they did remove that entire back cage piece. I think it just looks so much better without it. Yes, I do know, of course, that's a more futuristic Cybertronian truck. So, of course, they will be obviously very different. I think it just improves the figure so much more without it. That is just my opinion anyway. But if we do look at the front, of course, this entire front section is completely new molding. She actually, he actually has a brand new kind of windscreen. The entire front of the truck here, the grill section, brand new molding but if you do look at the side you can definitely see some similarities of course both the arms are kind of hanging underneath never really like that uh, the wheel design of course completely different you can actually tell one huge similarity is the feet they both do fold inside there and this entire kind of canister section and mech tech port section is quite similar as well and we can have a little bit of a back view here in case you're wondering what it looks like quite similar back here I think that's overall pretty much it for comparisons and this truck mode. Let's now get down to reverse transformations. You're just going to remove all the accessories and just put these off to the side. Then you're actually going to flip the feet up like that. Flip them up. Then you're actually going to separate this entire panel from the front hood. Same thing on the other side. Just on tab that it can be quite tight there we go so there is a tab on the hood and a slot on the inside of this panel then you're going to fold the legs all the way out just completely unravel them and extend them like that there we go then you're going to fold the foot in and then you're going to fold the secondary panel in and then of course that's just going to tab into place on the inside of the leg just like that do the same thing on the other side just tab that in and there we have the legs pretty much all done let me just quickly straighten them up and I'm actually going to raise the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Then you're going to actually bring the shoulders out. So how these actually kind of tabbed or slide into place. There's actually posts at the shoulders and this little cutout right there and that's how that all connected together. Then you're going to rotate at the bicep, rotate at the bicep and then just hinge the shoulders back just to get some added clearance. Then you're going to push the entire chest section down, tab that into place. Then you can actually tab the shoulder in. There's a slot and tab right there that's just going to tab into place. Same thing on their side and as for the last step of course just hit uh, get this panel here there's two posts and two ports just hinge that down into the back and there we have the re reverse transformation of detrius let's now get down to the final thoughts now for the final thoughts for the Transformers Legacy Evolution Wave 4 Deluxe Class of Detrius. I think overall this is a really good figure. Starting in the robot mode, interesting enough, he actually does wear a Decepticon symbol and an Autobot symbol, so you can actually create a pretty cool backstory for this character, like maybe he's a spy or maybe he's like a bounty hunter. That'd be pretty cool maybe if he ever appeared in like a TV show or movie, that'd be a really good idea. As for the entire deco and design itself, I actually really like the gold goatee on the head sculpt. I do like all the different shades of brown and red and kind of goldish bronze mixture, it's pretty cool. Speaking of accessories, is of course he actually does have a simple kind of standard pistol which is also done in that kind of bronze gold mixture which is blaster piece compatible and it can be stored using any mech tech port across the entire figure it also does come with this really cool kind of rocket launcher and the missile is removable i typically wouldn't because it's a very small piece and you could lose it again you can store that using any mech tech port across the entire figure usually i store it in the shoulder i think it looks the best there as for of course articulation overall really good for a deluxe probably better than some past deluxe figures i've actually gotten in the past couple of months and weeks um, um, he actually does have a wrist rotation, waist rotation, and an ankle pivot. And that might sound, you know, pretty standard as far as articulation goes, but typically for a deluxe, you usually don't get all three of those core main points. So, you know, you might get like two or one sometimes, but he actually has all three. Um, but, you know, for the other standard, you know, joints, the arms, the legs, the waist, everything is pretty well articulated for a deluxe class figure. Um... As far as tolerances go, actually really good. Pretty much in the sweet spot, you know, because sometimes joints can be too tight. Sometimes they can be too loose. This figure actually has kind of right in the middle, which is really good to see. I do have to say there's a couple panels here and there that probably could have tapped in a bit more securely. This could be just kind of a my copy type thing, but there's a few panels at the inner leg area and the robot mode that do have a tendency to untab, which gets a bit irritating and frustrating at times. So it would have been nice maybe if there was a few extra tabs and panels to actually keep them a bit more secure. But again, that could really just be my copy. I really don't know or it could be everyone's really don't know um 
As for transformation, if you do have any repaint or any variation of the Siege Deluxe Class Hound, you pretty much know exactly what to expect here. It's quite simple. If this is your first time experiencing this mold overall, it's actually a very fun transformation. Yes, it's a bit more on the simplistic side, but it's actually kind of nice to have a figure that's kind of a fiddle figure that you can just pick up and transform with ease, and I think this is the perfect figure for that. As for his truck mode, I actually do quite like it. I think I probably prefer this mold and this truck mode over the Siege Deluxe Class Hound, because they actually, they actually did remove that entire top cage piece, so it's a much more open. There's a lot less kibble, and that actually also does affect the robot mode. There's better articulation. There's, of course, a lot less of a backpack, and it just seems like a more sleek, uh, more compact figure overall. The truck mode, I actually do quite like. I do really like the entire color scheme of the nice sand brown, the red, and several different darker shades of brown, and of course, the accessory storage, I wouldn't say is, you know, the most interesting or complex. You pretty much just put them at the back of the truck, as you can see there, but I actually do quite like. I guess that's pretty much it. I do hope you enjoyed this review. Of course, please, please leave all your thoughts on this figure in the comment section down below, and I'll see you next time.